Welcome back to the Marianne Hickman Show. This is talk tips number 24. Why should you get on stage, especially if you own a business? Check it out. Hey, what's up? Marianne here. Now listen, you own a business. You've owned a successful business for a while now. In fact, you've put in the blood, sweat, and tears that nobody knows about and some that people do know about, and you've achieved a level of success in your business to wow, where now you're bringing in multiples of millions of dollars a year. Congratulations, first of all. That took so much work. Now, you're starting to feel this, first of all, sense of fulfillment. Go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. You should. But maybe there's something inside of you that says, okay, the business is humming. I have to do, you know, things inside the business from every now to then. I'm talking to my CEO. I'm maybe the CEO and I'm wearing a few hats or maybe I'm on the board. But there's something inside of you that says, okay, I did this. And I could probably help other people do the same thing. I'm beyond just managing my business and putting out fires all the time. Now I'm to the point where like, okay, I've gone through the school of hard knocks I've learned a thing or two, and maybe most importantly, people keep asking me how I did it. Now, if you're like me, you're paying attention, and if you're paying attention, you're realizing that you get asked the same question over and over and over again from different people from all of your circles, your social circles, your religious circles. Here's your indicator. You need to be getting on stage. If you find yourself repeating, how did you do it? And you find yourself repeating the answer to that question, that is your punch in the gut that says, now it's time to develop your signature keynote presentation. Now, this is going to be seen on podcasts. You've probably already been asked to speak. You've already asked, been asked to speak at conferences. You've been asked to speak at workshops. You've been asked to speak at seminars. You've been asked to speak at awards and galas, whatever the platform is, your message is so valuable that now other people are asking you to share it. Now, the first question you got to ask yourself is, what is the purpose? What am I going for? What am I doing this for? Why am I sharing my keynote? Because listen, if the keynote is just going to exist for keynote's sake and there's no way for people to benefit after you get off stage, then you're just going to be like every other informative speaker out there. You're not going to offer any real transformation. If you're if you really care about the people in the audience, you're going to want an element of your signature keynote that drives toward a call to action. Now, it could be, hey, here's the call to action. You should start using my company. Or maybe the call to action is join my community of other like-minded individuals and we get together and we talk about business once a quarter at this get-together over beer and pizza or whatever the case may be. Your signature keynote needs to have a call to action specifically that drives your audience to whatever the natural next step is. Now, for a lot of people, they're using public speaking as a career, and you might decide to shift into that. If you're getting asked the same question more than twice, then even if public speaking isn't going to turn out to be a career for you where you're taking speaker fees, it's an element of give back. It's an element of pay it forward. It's an element that answers the call that hit your gut that says, help the next generation of people advance. It's what Alex Hermosi says. If you are being asked the same question more than twice, you're now looked at as a mentor. And if you can't make it faster and more lucrative for the next generation, then what are we really doing here? So for your keynote, first of all, Decide what your speaker fee is because you're going to get asked. People are going to ask you, what's your speaker fee? And you've got to give an answer that sounds practiced, sounds rehearsed, sounds like you haven't said it for the first time just that day. So if I look at you and say, what's your speaker fee? You should know. If someone asked me, what's my speaker fee? And I'm like, uh, it's $5,000. Then that erodes your credibility right away. So just decide, whatever it is. Do me a favor, don't charge anything less than $500. That should be a big no, no, no. But just tell me what your speaker fee is. In fact, tell me in the comments, even if you're writing it for the first time, what is your speaker fee? If someone wanted to book you for an hour of your time, how much would you charge them plus travel, accommodations, et cetera? So decide on your speaker fee. Next, decide on what your call to action is. Why are you getting up on stage and not answering for yourself, but for your audience? What are you going to do for the people once you get on stage that you want to drive them to? Is it becoming a part of a community? Is it joining a mastermind? And they, they, listen, you don't have to be an official coach to do any of these things, but your people are going to ask the question, how do I get more of you 
after I have spent this time with you, whether it's a follow on YouTube or Instagram or whether it's joining an online community, have a place for people to gather. Your audience wants to learn more from you. Give them an opportunity to. And this begs the question, what happens if I get asked to speak and they want me to speak for free? This, this is fine, by the way but you're going to want to have some kind of a call to action to send your audience to. Now, maybe that you do want to get paid to speak. Maybe you're like, yeah, my time is so valuable. I don't want to speak unless it has a direct monetary ROI. In addition to the altruistic doing good and teaching, once you decide your speaker fee, you've also got to decide how to monetize that call to action. Then you can be competitive. And here's why. If you have a monetized call to action, you have you now have the ability, strength, and flexibility to waive that speaker fee, which corporations and businesses will like, and then be allowed to do that call to action because that call to action just might give you more monetary ROI than the speaker fee would. Bottom line is understand why you got yourself on that stage. It's not for you. It's not for your ego. You've already made the accomplishment. By the time you get on stage, you already have the credibility. The reason anybody should get on stage is to serve not just one person at a time, but dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people all at once. And if you're not there to serve the people, then you probably shouldn't be on stage. On the other hand, if you're there to show up and serve, the audience will feel you, they will connect with you, and you know they're going to want more of you. Let me know what questions you have. Remember to like and subscribe. I want to hear your speaker free in the comments and we'll see you in the next episode. Marianne Hickman here again. Listen, I hope super helpful for you. Maybe you learned something new. Share with me in the comments what was valuable. Or if you have this whole separate question like, hey, I wanted to know about this. I wanted to know about stage fright. I want to know how about my presentation on stage. I want to know about how to dress on stage. Anything that you want to know that's relevant to growing your business through stages, put in the questions. Because like, guess what? I go through and answer all of those personally. That's not an agency or a VA. That's me going through and looking at your questions because you are who I am here for. So last thing is I want you to get this database if you haven't gotten it already. Now I've got thousands of downloads on this thing, so maybe you've got it, but if not, make sure you go to mariannehickman.com forward slash database. What that's going to do is take you to a page. You're going to input all of your information. We're going to send the database to you. You're going to request access to it. I keep it locked down so I can make sure I get it to just the right people and you're gonna request access. And then once you have that, you're going to go through and apply to podcasts that have the topic that you'd be an expert speaking on. Here's the thing, I get this database updated twice a week. So there's always new stuff in there. And if you're a podcaster, there's even a list of guests that you can have on your show on that podcast. Maybe you end up doing a podcast swap and you grow your audience that way. Regardless, I want you to get it. So marianhickman.com forward slash database, and we'll see you in the next talk tips.